Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater. And Shelby. And of course, as usual on our Wednesday nights, we have Brian Covey with Aquachar. How's it going, man? I'm filling up a tank real quick because it was making too much noise for the live stream. Last oh minute prep. Technical difficulty. I don't understand why me? every single... No, it, it's our fault. We got to figure it out. The volume was all turned down on the on the thing. So you're doing a water change? What are what are you doing? I'm just adding water to a tank. I'm done. Oh, all right. All right. So let's jump into chat here. How's it going? Welcome in Crypt Keeper Aquatics and Jamie, both here real early today. Jamie's asking, how do you define an Anashi shrimp? So an Anashi is a hybrid between a Serata and a Taiwan bee. It's going to have a mask on the face, so like white, white frontal, um, and then the head will be a different color than the mask. And then where like you have a panda shrimp and it's a solid bar that wraps all the way around the body with the nanashi it's going to be more like a tooth like a, the up to the, the roots of a tooth um and then it's going to have some tiger stripes on the tail and if you want to advance the nanashi you're going to have a back line going down the top of the shrimp and then some dots on the head and i 100 percent agree with you on that one <laughs> Jamie said, that's the aquascape from Shelby's TikTok. Yes, i having difficulties trying to get a cover photo today. <laughs> Drawing blanks. <laughs> it's, it's been a rough week. We still don't have a car. I'm hoping tomorrow I don't have any packages or anything to go out. So I'm going to go hit a couple dealerships without Shelby and see what's up. Thank you, Jamie. That's the hardest part. I hate doing car shopping. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. now. It's like a uh, hundred degrees outside too when you're looking at the car lots and it's just hot as can be. And you gotta play the game, get the deals, and they all know the game that they're gonna play, so they'll sit make you sit there for like six hours just dealing with stuff. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, aquascape thing. <laughs> I was, hey, how was uh, how was Alex's trip? How was the? Sh I, I know you guys, you guys did a live stream on Monday, but how was the talk and everything? So the talk was really well. Uh, he's all upset that his uh, slideshow went down during the middle of it, but like honestly, uh, he kept talking as if nothing ever happened, and it was just a really good talk. I've been trying to like mix it up since I'm in charge of getting speakers for the club. Um, I don't want it all to be like, oh, this is another breeding talk, another breeding talk. So uh, he had a history uh, of like everything that was major that set the stone for what the hobby is today. So um, really got into depth. A lot of it was ancient, ancient history. It wasn't until like the third to last, you know, major event that it was kind of in like the Victorian times and you started to see, you know, the nice tanks and stuff like that. So a lot of it I already knew because I've, I've watched a lot of Alex's videos, but uh, it, it was a good talk for the club. Um, and then like all he really wanted to do was like go collecting. I know he wanted to nice. go to Lucas Brett's house and stuff like that, but um, I, I, he didn't have a ride and planned he didn't really set anything in stone. He kind of just went with the flow and I, I don't blame him. That's kind of what we do as well. So we, uh, you got so much down there. So I don't, I don't blame him at all. Like I remember the couple of times we went out looking for plants and stuff like that. It was just like anywhere you went on something. So I actually took him back where we went with, uh, Kevin Kelly and yeah. we, I, I didn't get lost. Was there more time. water there? Oh my God, because it's been raining so much, the entire That's... place was flooded. So if we had made it to where I wanted to go at Three Bridges Road, there would have been like just a little tiny creek that went under each one of the bridges. It's called Three yeah. Bridges Road because there's legit three tiny little bridges. And yeah. 
let's just say there was all one river because all three bridges basically you know there's a road that flowed yeah. that wasn't you know flooded but on each side of the road on both sides was completely flooded and the the like the one spring that i did bring you guys to eagle's nest yeah that yeah. is like a um the the sink of florida so everything yeah. gets drained so it looks like it's a running river but it's all just getting drained and then when we made it to eagle's nest that was completely flooded wow yeah it was crystal clear and you could see divers like all the way across that thing but not not today because of all the rainwater and all the tannins yeah. get washed in oh that's that's interesting i know I, that's always one of my cool the coolest thing about seeing my like springs and stuff is where that tannin like river water will meet with the springs yeah no even buford springs which is like uh crystal clear water too that was like coca-cola black it was it was too dark yeah. to jump in like, i know there's like some fallen logs in the water and i was gonna just jump in because i know like there's not gators or anything like that in that cold of water uh, i mean yeah. there, i'm sure there is but they don't it's not as common um and yeah, right I, I, was like, I don't want to jump in on a log what'd you say i said it, we're floridians like the, the like the, our thoughts about gators and stuff like that is so minimal of our time anymore yeah i i had no shoes on going through the swamps and like jumping from island to island and then alex is like i found an elasoma i need the net and i'm like a hundred nice. yards in and I'm like, uh, hold on. Let me get close enough. I can throw you the net. Yeah. I need, I, I need to go with a buddy and, and fight and see the elasomas that we have here, like right around my house in the ponds. I don't know if they're native or if, like or from around here or stocked, but I'd love to see the coloring difference and stuff like that up here. I'm sure they're native. They've uh, got to go all the I'll way. I'll probably they stock the pond or not because it's like it's one of those development areas but i'm pretty sure like that'd be an interesting one for somebody to stop right the guy who lives there um in jacksonville that does achilles uh yeah he collects he does a lot of collecting so yeah um, there's a new member in our club who was at the triple crown and Shelby was talking about Achilles, and he's like, "Oh, did you you have you read my book?" And she's like, uh, no, "What's your book?" And I guess he wrote the encyclo encyclopedia of killifish or something like that. Oh, that's awesome! And, and I guess he knows the guy in Jacksonville really well. So hopefully, we nice. can link up with him. And I also want to get the guy to to come down and talk for our club. But yeah, <laughs> but Should Alex him on the show. Alex spent a ton and ton of time at the house, like going through, and he's a bit yeah. of a shrimp nerd. He wants to know how this shrimp is made and what does it look like in different stages and stuff like that. So we took a lot of film throughout the house. It, it really got awesome. into so, detail for some of his That's videos. one of the cool things about him is because he's much into the genetics and like, you know, like even on our, our stream that we were talking about, you know, um, specific types that what was it that what was the fish that he said that looks completely different from another part of china uh i have no idea one. but yeah that's one of the cool things about him with the history and everything like that is because he's he's very much about knowing the details and genetics and where they're from and all that stuff and yeah he knows, i know he i know knows i get lost in the house so what's that he said he knows the locales. He's got location and scientific names. Oh, isn't it crazy? Point. I've got to watch his video on how to piece together the Latin names so I can understand them a bit better. Did you say hi to Richard Reynolds already? No, I haven't said hi to like anyone. You guys have been talking. All right. Well, how's it going, Richard Reynolds? Uh, I've got an announcement to make. We have fish now on the website. So, uh, Richard Reynolds, we have his celestial pearl danios and uh shell dwellers on the website and we also have gary's dwarf neon rainbows so three different uh types of fish on the website get them while they're uh fresh out of quarantine so well, great on, on uh, 
Oh, sorry. On, on yeah. Monday, I jumped when I, when I jumped on. You were talking about a collection uh, book. Are you talking about the 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 folder, the binder? Yeah. I have one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you son I of a gun! Let me borrow it. Ago. What's that? Well, what what I can do is we'll have to start a group chat, and I'll take pictures of different pages. So like we can oh. we can talk about it because it has like locations and stuff like that. So it's got it's got rare information in there. So yeah, um, it's let's it's let's let's, let's, let's get out of everything like that because I like I'd like a discussion around that type of things just to understand native Florida a it's, little bit better. It's definitely something that I'm gonna get involved a lot more because of two reasons. One, the kids have so much fun doing it. You know, and the other one is like, it's at the, at our fingertips. There's so many different little like tiny creeks and ponds and I just never have time to get around to them. So I want to go to like yeah. each one and document them, film them. What do we find in each one? Because we took, I mean, I took uh, Alex to the Chaskawiska. We basically like went to four different spots that were all really different. Yeah. And then Shelby was off on Sunday. We took them to Cruise Lake Park to like three different spots there at the park, but it's all still one lake. And then we went to Hunter's Lake. So, but at all different locations, we caught different types of fish. But I'm so, like positive they're all, you know, at each one of the locations too. So, I'm, I'm what one thing I'm super jealous about is it's really cool to get people in their element like in your own backyard because it gives you so much information that you didn't even know like things that you've seen before and things to look for uh that is so cool like uh when i went to uh uh gilchrist blue springs with uh, this guy gazenfar and like he's going through the plant list identifying everything i mean what's rare what's not like i still have some of his original plants that we pulled up from from just snorkeling there and stuff like that so isn't it, I'm jealous of that opportunity just to be in his element. I, th I bet you that was a cool experience. What did you learn? Like, what was like your number one your takeaway? Um, not not too much like fishing techniques, but like together we we identified a lot of the new fish. So like the the banded killies, some of the sunfish. Um, we thought one of the fish was crap crappy and is actually something else. Like. I, it was something totally lying. and I, I'm not going to be able to repeat yeah. it off the top of my head. But um, I, I wasn't sure if I could find these pygmy sunfish in certain areas, and we were able to get them, you yeah. know, quite easily. So, what about you, Shelby? Oh, I don't know if you mentioned it, but uh, the flagfish—they're voracious algae eaters. They'll eat a pear algae like, and you don't have to feed them. Yeah, they're they're pound for pound champs of the algae eating world. I, I want blew, to those get, blew my mind. I I want to get them through quarantine like a, a month or two in the house, and if they survive, I'll throw yeah. them out back in the pool. They'll nip on baby shrimp, but yeah, like as far oh, as there's taking no shrimp to get them. So there's polar blue cichlids, uh, parrot cichlids out in the the pond. So. Yeah, I'm going to move those inside and then we'll probably put the flag fish outside. So, you know what I used to use them for? Uh, plant that? quarantine. Yeah. Plant quarantine. So I put them in a tank with some mollies and stuff like that because those two usually fall together well. But like, you know, when you get in, like, so when I order new plants, especially from nurseries and stuff like that, they would pull the hair algae off, but there'd always be the, the little pieces on the, like the, the leaves and stuff. So they're really good at picking that stuff off and not letting it grow on new plants. So I used to keep a, a big school of those, or not a big school, but like five to seven of them. Uh, and, and when I had my racks behind in my, uh, in here. I actually just got, two, we, we just got two big old baskets of boosts. So the flatfish yeah. and all the other native fish are in that tank. So if they get nice. any uh, new tank syndrome or anything like that, I'm, I'm sure the killifish fish will take care of it. Yeah, I really um, ate any of my plants or messed with any of my plants. 
and the the boost actually didn't melt at all I, I was expecting like a lot more melting but um hopefully it holds up because it it'll be really nice for us to be able to use it in chicago yeah you have a ton of it yeah it, it completely carpets the floor of a 55 gallon tank yeah i'm excited so anyway, Shelby, you want to you go back to giving your shout outs and catching up on comments before we go into the topic or what do you guys want to say? Pokemon Zen Ginger and Beta Aquatics. Had a lot of people rolling. Not at all. Here. Our viewers are back. Shelby's back. <laughs> Spaz says, speaking of boost, bought a bunch of it for my 20 gallon shrimp tank. I think it's called Sing Tang. I heard of that one yet yeah very nice uh, boost is definitely one of our favorite plants for sure it's high high in demand low maintenance easy to care welcome in spaghetti nona greetings to you too as long as Hello, you can Arctic convert it into light. what's up I said convert it and give it good light yeah i think that's my biggest advice for that a lot of people try to keep it like a nubius, like it's a, a shadow plant, and it's not. It's like a show-off plant. It if you kind of like shade it though, that's when it gives like the really cool like pink color to it though. Yeah. Because every time I find it like buried in some boot, uh, some moss, it's always like pink and like nice and yeah, you know, colorful. Welcome in Nano Aquarium Guy and MTS. And only Oscars. Speaking of that, did you send tracking to the people you shipped out to today? They were all PayPal. Wow, good. good. Yeah, I didn't have to do anything. It was easy. Click and ship. <laughs> Jamie, that would be it. Would be a golden panda or a black bee? Did I skip something? No. It's I think Brian keeps up with, with, with chat. He stays yeah. live, so we'll catch up to that. But uh, Welcome in, Caprice. Hopefully, we can find time to get some uh, bees' knees going. That would be nice. I've had a couple Is people she's... ask about it. Yeah, I got 20 things I've been doing, so... I did get 40, 40 more pounds of soy hoy. Somebody asked for larger amounts. You can email yeah. us at greatheater at gmail.com. I can work up something like that. But um, until we get back from Chicago, Aquashella, I probably won't have anything like that available on the website. Only author says all the rivers and ponds here in California are infested with the homeless. That would make me so sad. It's, it's starting to get that way here in Florida, though. Hey, it really is. Yeah, I noticed that. Nano said they have CPDs now. Nice. Yep. They were bred by Richard Reynolds here in chat. And we've had 50 of them in a 55 gallon tank. And uh, I think they're like devouring the Cory cat eggs at this point. But we haven't lost a single one of them. We've had them for longer than what we should have. Wasn't in a huge rush to get them up for sale because we kind of like attached to them because they like all school and one of the pieces of spider wood. And then when Shelby feeds them in the morning, then they feel safe and they come out and they school in, be in between the two pieces. So it kind of fills out the tank real nice. Oh, those, man, that's one thing I like about those is when they school like twice a day, but they never, but then they're, they're very clean, cleany fish. Like, like you said, they eat eggs or anything that's different. They'll, they'll kind of try to clean the area. Yeah, I was using the scraper method to get all the eggs off the glass and I accidentally yeah. went over the top of one of the eggs and smushed it and all the, the Danios went crazy around the you know the popped egg. Uh, speaking of Rob though, just got the uh, shrimp sticks are up on the website as well. Got those up tonight. Oh, you got those on? Mm -hmm. Pictures and everything? Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. Look at her. She's a champion. Jamie said, Grant, while you're caught up in chat, we're not really, but what's what's with a, what will a golden bee and a black panda make? So that is how you make Michelings. As long as the golden bees are pure, true crystal shrimp, a crystal shrimp crossed with a pure and true Taiwan bee 
will make a crystal shrimp that has the Taiwan B gene uh, deep inside of it. So when you cross the Michelin's together, you'll get a mix of crystals, Michelin's, and Taiwan bees. Did I just leave you hanging on a high five? I'm like literally out of it if that's what you were doing. Nah, you're do. good. Okay. I was like, I didn't realize like till like a couple minutes later and I'm like, man, that is so awkward because I am out of it. Like I have no idea what's going you're on. You're a champion. So, yeah, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Here's another Sorry, one. Of Jamie, our I was wrong. I said that this is what I said earlier. I said it was either oh golden panda or black bee. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So another go. one of our problems is Alex is from Washington. So he's three or four hours behind us. Yeah. So at nighttime, Alex would be hanging out talking with us until like two, three o'clock in the morning. And then we'd still have to get up at seven o'clock in the well. Shelby would still have to get up at seven o'clock in the morning to get the kids to school, and then I'd have to wake up at eight. So I didn't get to sleep yeah. in until like eleven, twelve o'clock, like Alex did. And then I'm waiting for him all day to message me to get going and go do some collecting or to the river or something like that. So uh, the jet lag affected all three of us. Welcome in, Big Dog and Jimmy P. Poor Shelby came out outside yesterday while me and Alex were talking. She's like, turn off the RO water. And then me and Alex were like in mid-conversation. I was like, I'll finish this and go turn it off. Forgot to turn it off. Flooded the whole house. Entire house. Yeah. 80, 88, she's a bitch. <laughs> Welcome in, Snoochie Booch and U.S. Scraper. Scaper. Did I say Scraper? Yeah. Oh, man. Nana, so Shelby is employee of the month for sure. I need a plaque on the wall. I got that. you a plaque already. She's the boss. What are you talking about? She's not, not a plaque. The She's the boss. How many plaques do I have to get her? <laughs> oh, man. She's the boss lady. And there is the link for the, the shrimp and bee sticks. I can't believe how many people love those yeah, like actually, i love them Crypt Keeper awesome. just posted a video today of an unboxing video from shrimp envy and it had two packs of shrimp sticks oh so, yeah i need to try some of those i need to get some good shrimp food i i personally should probably try the shrimp sticks we have not used any of them in the tanks i am though using the the baby uh shrimp food powder to feed my baby quarry cats and they love it so Nice. Sunchi Booch said box came in great today. Was really hoping for the membership code for another for another order of food. I have on hand is shrimp. Cuisine. I cuisine. swear to God, <laughs> we wrote it up. How did they not get it? I didn't put it in the box. <laughs> So we left it aside and everything, wrote it sometimes. down, and I was, and he says he didn't get it, and I'm just like, I feel so bad. It's, so we will get that out to you as well as some aqua char out to Kyle of Poseidon's pets. So we can send that out tomorrow. You don't need to write it down. Do. I've got it. I've okay. got it. You better, you better send it oh, out. I never, I, I, if it's yeah. not my, I need to send it out. Like, but yeah, we. If it's not directly I, in my system. I can't do it. I forgot things all over the place. There was three people that wanted me to bring things to the <laughs> club meeting, um, yeah. and I forgot. Well, I mean, there was five people that wanted me to bring things to the club meeting. I only remembered two, so I forgot three people. Oh, get a dry erase board like the size of a piece of paper and use that. That's but that's why you have one the size. <laughs> we have the one the size of a poster board, and it's, it's still. Not you have to look at it to remember it. You know what I mean? Hey, my wife, I told her to leave me instructions on ours. And she'll get home a lot of times and say, why didn't you do this? And I said, do what? She said, you, to you told me to write down chores on the board that I want you to do. And you didn't do any of them. <laughs> I was like, oh, I did get it. <laughs> so I said, write it down and then tell me it's on the board. And then I'll have that external pressure. 
<laughs> so U.S. Scaper said, am I the only one who has major troubles with Crypt Flamingo tissue cultures? Uh, no, a lot of people have issues with that. Um, best part about those is to start them. That was my hair. Um, what did I do? To, you were pulling on it. That was weird. Uh, to start them in a dry start is the best way to get those going. Um, rooted really good. And then, um, it, cause if you just put them in a tank, they're just going to melt. Um, almost all of the Crypt Flamingos that I ever got in when I was working, um, and selling those, they were always almost all, all melted and everything else survived, but the, um, uh, Flamingo Crypts. So, and then not only that, but we did a gig for Denarily and they paid us in tissue cultures and we got like two or three boxes of nothing but pink flamingo crypts. And we, I, I didn't want to throw all of our eggs in one basket type thing. One of the tanks where I put like, I don't know, good 200 pink flamingo crypts in, the entire tank melted up. And I put the most work into that tank. I put the ladder right down, all, all the works. Uh, eventually I tried more in that tank and they ended up thriving. There was once upon a time where I was selling so many pink flamingo crypts because of that deal that it made it really lucrative for us. But uh, even up here, the ones that we got from the nursery that are not tissue cultures that are in the um, uh, rock wool, they, they still melt. If there's any kind of like pH swing or parameter change or something like that, they, they just they're so sensitive. All right, so here's my secret. I've had this running for like two years, but I just have like one of these small fish. But like I've got some like this is this is uh, Crypt Spiralis uh, Tiger, and like this is all. I mean, it's reverted, but I get it actually usually pretty easily. It just hasn't had a light up over it. Um, but yeah, that's usually how I, I I've always had really good success just putting it in a bowl like that. I've even used like fruit dish it's like the dishes you get at like like the plastic little jars you get at uh, like for fruit to just to keep the humidity in there yeah i i've been saving all like the salty shrimp containers and and like bigger jars and stuff shelby's got like a bunch of yeah. hardware jars or buckets that she brings home too and i throw all yeah. of our old aqua soil in it oh and you throw you a little that, huh? but, but so this lid goes on top of it and that's as big as the hole is that that right. and i put water in it maybe once every six months i'll just spray mist it type of thing but it's its own ecosystem nice got a couple of roly polies in there too just to eat the, the decay and stuff nice jimmy p said sticky notes on my forehead for work for me <laughs> not a bad idea not a bad idea <laughs> says thanks i appreciate it i know you're busy what do you think about shrimp cuisine by hikari will they do okay with that it, it's a fine food it's just like you don't get a lot of bang for your buck it's expensive for how much you get um and i i think there's a lot of filler and stuff in it I, not off the top of my head i i can't remember what the ingredients are but um I just want to get as many varieties of shrimp food as I possibly can and the most bang for your buck. You'll notice like the, the hierarchy um, foods, they, they kind of uh, dissolve quite quickly into the water column and I, I don't want it to fall out the water. So yes, Scaper said, I did that and messed up by adding them to a newly flooded, newly set up tank instead of a matured tank. Yes, they will go into shock. But the good thing is about uh, crypts, any crypts for that matter, actually, you could have it melt down to the bare roots and it will still grow back. But you need to cut those dead melted plants or else you're going to it's going to take all the nutrients from the root and kill it at the root. Um, so if you ever see one, just chop it and let it grow back. I've had ones that melted all the way and still grew back. So you'd be surprised how hardy they are. So that's actually, it's interesting. This is kind of transitions to what we were going to talk about tonight. Um, but like, so we, when I'm replanting my crypts, a lot of people will like even rip off the roots and think it's going to grow back, 
back. But what I actually do is like I'll wrap it around my finger loosely, like the the whole long roots that I can pull up. Uh, and, and then I take the curved tweezers and just squeeze both sides and I put it in the direction that I want the roots to basically go. So you're not you're damaging the root slightly, but the, you're not damaging the whole structure that the they they built. So whatever is going to survive is going to survive. But at least you have uh, you're not hurting the plant because crypts are such a, a root heavy thing. Oh, and uh, yeah, this is actually the first Aquachar bowl. It's been three years, and I used uh, Aquachar at the bottom of it with uh, some old aqua soil. Oh, nice. Yeah, I knew there was a comment somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the, the roots also became mush. Yeah, so might have been ammonia. Yeah, uh, that's uh, been a lot of non established. If, if it's not a mature tank, it's definitely ammonia burn, especially on the roots. <laughs> uh, I don't think they meant like the bull for the scaping. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think I got it. Yeah. Uh, Big Dog said, Is rock wool bad if it is in the tank? No, no, it's not. It's just if it's like visible, it's not very uh, appealing. So best to cover it up the best you can, but and it'll uh, always find a way to be visible. Yeah. So uh, tissue cultures usually they're really good, um, but almost every time we get a tissue culture, we always dry start it first. That is the best method to getting it to root and to have a solid structure before you add it or flood it. Except for the moss, we just plop oh, yeah. and drop that right in and it, it took off really nice for us. So, or you can uh, also, you can float it when you're, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Moss. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So when I transition it from from growing it immersed, like once it gets good, has a good root, sometimes I'll just float it for a couple of days to make sure that I can see the roots are growing because it'll, it'll get good light at the top and everything. And then you can plant it where like, you know, if, if you know whether it's going to melt or not, you can pull off those dead leaves and then plant it with good roots or submerged roots. And if you've never done a dry start method, Grant does have a very terribly old video of it. <laughs> it's not a terrible video. It's just terribly it's old. It's probably terrible. So I haven't watched it in like bad. years. It's but probably horrible. I should probably just film that one over there. But uh, just basically soil and it, you're creating a little tiny ecosystem like Brian's pretty much. And just we do saran wrap instead of the lid. Um, and then we just pull it back, let it air out for a little bit, get some fresh air. Then I spray it down, let it air out, spray it down, and then put it back. And then, and and yeah. one of the things that's not in the video that I wish I had put in springtails. If you can put some springtails in your dry start, they will eat any of the decaying and mold or anything like that in the scape. So they're like a real, real quick moss too. Uh, trick to throw in there. Moss on the substrate too. I've been trying to get Madagascar lace plants from the nursery, but they're always sold out. They were even on the list last time. Let me add them. And then they didn't make it the next day. I was like, they Dang. take a while to grow, especially indoors. They we do. have tons of little sprouts and they're still little itty bitty ones and they're cute, but they're taking forever. Adam sent us one too. So <laughs> we got even extra sprouts, yeah. but yeah, no, they, they just grow so slow. I'm sure if we had CO2 and fertilizer, they'd probably grow a little and, bit better. And they usually like, pull them out once a year, the bulbs. Yeah. Uh, welcome in, Brandon. I don't think I said hi earlier. I said Crip Nuri took from tissue culture was a slow starter for me and continues to grow slow after three months. I think that one's a, a slower growing Crip than the, the other ones, though. I might be wrong. Welcome I, in, Leo. I believe that's why it's a little bit more expensive and harder to get than like the wet dinis. It's the first time I've lost all the leaves on my Anubias. Oh no. So like oh. we we brought in a bunch of Anubis and it seemed that the Fraser eye would melt and everything else was fine. So I wonder if it was a Fraser eye, Leo. 
Hello, welcome in Killer Kitty. And thank you so much, Crip. Oh, thank you so much for the super sticker, Killer Kitty. And with that, you get our. Well, you pressed the right one. <laughs> So many options now. Yeah, I, I should probably get rid of some of those ones. No, no, oh, no, no. yeah, okay, I remember. The, there's a point Welcome for everyone. Welcome in Mountain Greenery. Yeah, I want I want somebody to do the where you can do the fun one. <laughs> That's my new favorite. Yeah, you said so. A friend of mine per se placed a UV light in an empty tank. Let's say Anubius didn't like it. And well, turned gray. Sorry, his Anubius. Oh, no. So I wonder if the UV light increased the temperature or anything like that, too, because a lot of people are like, oh, I need a heater on my tank or something like that, or they can't figure out why their tanks are so warm and don't realize that the lights per put off a, a lot of temperature. So a lot of heat. They don't put off temperature. Jesus. Um, so I, I've got to do something with the scape contest. However, there was no time to do it this week or next week. It's going to have to wait until we get back from Chicago, Aquashella. I'll have every, everything set in stone. I know like we're going to do like a 50 to a hundred dollar gift card, but I was going to ask one or two other companies to donate to get some hard scale oh. materials. So we were talking about, you know, maybe doing it a holiday or maybe a Halloween oh, type yeah. of thing. Yeah. So I think we should do I, it you know, all. We can, we can see what people say in the chat and see what they th what they think, because I think you can go oh, both ways with orange things, but I think red red might be fun to play with from a, 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 a I think we all would, would probably want to grow out some, some, some of our plants nicely for the contest. So I, I, I think yeah. we should do some seasonal holiday type contest. So yeah, we could do we... one for Halloween, do one for Christmas, do one maybe for Valentine's Day, and it has to be like all red plants. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I think we could theme it out. You like that idea, what Shelby? Can do? I think you should do it for these three holidays. Thank you for skipping one. What holiday did I skip? Thanksgiving. He's no. not thankful for anything. We don't got anything. time That's for why. Thanksgiving. Yeah, exactly. Now you all know. He's never thankful for anything. That's how he forgets about it. Um, I didn't but forget. I, was thinking, I just not tried to yeah. escape. Holla oh, man. I thought she was talking about St. Patrick's Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving and so. Christmas, and I think we should gift it out during Christmas. And well, uh, that, like, you have till Christmas to do it, and then we'll like new year's or something we'll announce it or something like that so new year you know the, the something you could even do new years in it with it or not that would be fun don't even yeah. because i have a great idea and you're really getting on my nerves now and it yes i think that all the holidays and i have a great idea so if we don't do the holidays i'm gonna be very upset because then you ruined my so holidays. hey Shelby, no, come on! Since before we get past talking. Thanksgiving, I'm still stuck on Thanksgiving here. I'm gonna punch him. If we're gonna do a Thanksgiving look. contest, it's got to be the food on your plate, and you've got to make it look like a natural. No, aquascape. I mean it's one contest. You just have this well, whole say, time let's to make it. it. Yeah, let's Different do it a holiday holidays. contest, and you can pick whichever holiday of the year you want to do it off of. Represent. And then have it all and like so you could do Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New yeah. Year's, and then we'll announce it New Year's. So each one can be different. No. Different holidays. Well, let's pick we any holiday. We do one for October, and we do one for Halloween, and then we do one for Christmas. And we do we do We're it like quarterly. We're lucky to keep anything going. We do it like quarterly. Okay, have fun with that. No, let's we do can't one. Even get let's things do one. one. Oh, it's doable. Let's do the first one for Halloween, right? It is fair, but you can pick your holiday. You can pick your plants and things like that, but the, the theme of your op will be holidays. So you okay, can do Luck at the Irish. I want to get it done, Day. though, in October. It's December, so we'll, we'll start it in October, November, and then 
had the contest in as a holiday thing. Maybe do a white elephant among everybody. Exchange names and stuff. Put it in the hat and exchange names. I've got judges. No. Nope. <laughs> like so I didn't want a contest to go too, too long. I just got to get sponsors and then I'll pick a date. Yeah. And then the stream before the date is when we'll we'll do it on the live. And then the people who want to join us will we'll figure out how many spots we need. Crip said, best thing, best thing you can do for Crip aside from root tabs is your light on a timer. Long hours with low light setting works wonders. Yeah. Yes. Do you do spurts with caradinas? So we have in the past. It really depends on like what your goal is. If your goal is to breed or to grow really nice plants and you need fertilizer for those plants that you want to grow and to achieve the thickness and lush, you know what I mean, that you want to get, you're going to have to use the fertilizers. It is doable with caradinas in the tank. You're just going to have to go slow, uh, adjust the parameters, you know, a little bit at a time until you get your fertilizers to the levels you need them to be. Um, I would also go with like, tang tie or yellow king kongs or something that are a little bit more hardier uh the tang tie you can get some that have the tie tie b genes or something like that so if you do get uh babies that come out tie tie bees and your parameters are working for them then you can try on some harder shrimp more expensive ones so but we, do, we don't use any fertilizer or co2 in the house yeah so so if i wanted to do some tie tie bees and is it better to do put put fertilizer in the substrate at the roots, or is it better to dose it in the water column? Because like I can see the difference or advantage because you know like your TDS is going to go up if you put salts in the water column, but it's also the plants are going to at the roots are going to take what they need, but it could affect the food or whatever they pick off of the ground. So what do you think? So there? I would avoid. I would avoid putting it in the substrate just because every time you mess with the substrate in the shrimp tank, it, it seems yeah. like you create a bacterial infection or something like that. So I would dose in the water. I pre-mix your water changes or something like that and, and add it in yeah. when you're doing your water changes. Okay. Welcome in Yellowstone Aquatics. There, there is a Thrive fertilizer that is shrimp uh, specific, has no copper in it, works great. Nice. Spaz said, I set up my 20 gallon tank last week, bought all tissue culture plants and are all growing. No melting so far. Use laterite, florin based lattern, capped with carob seed eco plant. Very nice. Nice. So, you want to catch up on chat, and I'm going to go gather some uh, aquascaping tools. Okay. All right. Yeah, you catch up on chat. I'm going to go grab some water real quick. Okay. Everyone just leaving. Welcome in, Snoop. And hey, watch Jeff. the numbers grow when we go away. <laughs> so there, there's different tiers to the videos, and there will be uh, more videos coming out of, as well. So Trump wig is not gone, apparently. Um, I do probably am going to change the color of the glasses. I don't want people uh, thinking <laughs> it's a Trump wig. Uh Welcome in, Benjamin Peters. Yes, it, it's still there. Still there. It's a different tier for that one. Boop, 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 boop. Welcome in, Big Shrimpin. And Big Dog asks, do you need a UV light for fish tank? You do not need a UV light for fish tank. Um, most things will be just fine with LEDs. You could do stronger UV lights for some plants, but you don't need to. Um, that's my tool. Um, <laughs> but no, you don't need it. You would need it for like turtles and stuff like that. Like we use it for turtles. They need it for their shells. I mean, it doesn't mean that it wouldn't be good for like some shrimp. They do better with some, um, different UV like outside, but I would not do it for a fish tank because you can cause a lot of issues with algae problems.
Crypt said, oh, I like this curveball you're throwing us for the contest. Super cool. Yes, there is a contest, you escaper. Um, we just haven't gotten it completely set, but it will be posted. It'll most likely be posted um, on our YouTube channel. I'll make a post about it and our Facebook page when we get all the rules and what we're doing exactly, um, what the prizes will be, and so forth. But we have to all agree on this. And, and when we agree on everything, we'll do a video. We'll post the video. We'll do a premiere for it. It'll be uh, a lot more organized. Right now, it's just like that idea that's floating around in the air. We're going with the flow. Yeah, we're still negotiating it. Yeah. Live you amongst did? you so we can get your feedback. Yeah. There was one big plant in the package I'm not familiar with. There was big Anubis. A uh, narrow leaf Java furnace sword, and this one that had long roots and long leaves. Do you remember what it is? Crap. No, send a picture. <laughs> yeah. Send a picture. We already forgot. Yeah. I know I sent you some red root floaters. Um, I have no idea what else I sent you. I'm sorry. Nano said, no, we're fighting for the turkey aquascape. We're fighting for it. We got to convince Grant. Thanksgiving tank should be all freshly propagated plants for your own harvest. Not a bad idea. Aquascape a pumpkin. So we've actually done that before. We have a whole video on it. Uh, we bought this cool, like a. Uh, I think we did a whole video on it. We I just, think. We well, we probably deleted it. it. The no, no I, I, I did a video for oh. it, and then you couldn't see the shrimp, so it was not good. I thought we added it to the Aquashella Dallas video. Oh yeah, and said it was a fail. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it, um, you're distracting me. It's bothering me. But yeah, it was a cute little pumpkin from Target, and it's one of those ones that you're supposed to make like punches in or something, and it, it didn't work out. You couldn't see, so like, you got to find the right zero one. Zero visibility. The escape was on point. The idea was on point. Ooh, that's a good idea. When you filled it up with water, it wasn't meant to be viewed. Big shrimp and said, "Yeah, just put a glass panel in a pumpkin." Yeah. Could you imagine the little yeah, shrimp eating pumpkin is it might be, in it? It might be one of those things, like, yeah, it might be one of those things where, where, where we, if we let people decide, we come up, we, we see some cool escapes. We might get, we might actually see the bootscape finally for National Boot Day. <laughs> So Jamie said, oh, sure. Canadian Thanksgiving is October 10th. My aquascape's going to be a mom pile. That's good. <laughs> Crip said, the whole good idea was that what I was planning to do with mine anyhow, so this works good. Awesome. Welcome in yeah, Vibes see. Aquatics. Let me just catch up real quick before you say Shelby's going to get her way. Thank you. <laughs> And welcome in Zandadoo. And we're caught up so we can talk about aquascaping tools. Only 48 minutes into it, finally getting to the topic. <laughs> well, do we want hey, to talk tools. about our favorite one? You want to talk about your favorite one first? Well, I just want to, I want to know what you guys think because I got plenty of favorite ones, but like, what are your go tos? Like, like each pick, let's I'll pick one and introduce it. Why? All right, Shelby goes first because she's ready. Paintbrush. My favorite one. So um, this is so useful in almost every situation. I choose this one. Uh, it's got that little point at the end and it's a little, it's real thin. It's hard to show how thin it is. Um, but I use this because you don't know how many times when you're aquascaping, the glass in the front will get this like film on it from the new dust. Um, so I use this to get all the new bubbles off, all the dust from the substrate coming up. So I'll use this and wipe the front. It's thin enough that if I do put rocks closer to the thing, I can make sure there's nothing there. Um, I also use this to brush up sand up to or like accent stones. Um, so like you're throwing them in a tank after you add the water is usually the best time because if you add them in first and then add the water, then it's going to be all over the place. Um, Woohoo! Sorry for the interruption. That wasn't the right one. She would have done the same to me. It was the right one. No, no, I was the right one. That's a new member, no. but we got a new new member. Remember? Once we get more than one member, then mm -hmm. yeah, let's go. Upgraded one. 
Welcome, Andanakin Aquatics. How's it going, Dan? Or Kenny? But welcome, oh, Jake. Kenny. New member. Welcome to the clan. So, Shelby, that's actually the perfect pick for you because, like, your Aquascape tile, you're so detail oriented. Like, <laughs> you do the part that Grant and I don't have any patience for. Like, patience we can see for? big pictures and planting, but like, you, you like, like, I, I know Grant, Grant told this story before. It's like, you, you know exactly how to plant plants to make it look natural. It, it's very natural for you to do that. Like, you see that vision, that, de that detail stuff that I know for me personally, it's hard for me to get into. But anyways, Grant, what's your favorite? My favorite? It's got to be. Oh, oh I, I'm so sorry. It's, it's the spray bottle. What was that? Oh, the microphone? No, it, it was the spray bottle. I, I, I oh. set it up so it would get her. I thought you would go first. Wow. But uh, <laughs> it's definitely got to be the pump action spray bottle because when you're building up the scape and you're doing the moss and everything like that, everything starts to dry on you. And then your hand's going to get relentlessly tired after time yes. before you know it that it's, it's going to have cramps and it's going to take up a ton of time. You can soak the entire tank with this thing in like five seconds compared to like the, the spray bottles. And like a big mistake is like showing up to a contest and you don't even have anything to wipe your plants. And then you're kind of yes. like in a mad dash to get your plants planted as soon as possible before they start to dry up or you, you, you've got dry plants or you're trying to plant while the tank is flooded. And that in itself is, you know, cause for a disaster. <laughs> so what about you, man? So my favorite tool and it actually took me a while to get used to this or, or figure this one out is curve tweezers so yeah if you've ever tried to use straight tweezers if you can find something with a decent curve on them yeah yeah so always go in at an angle jiggle them out pull it out it makes it easy to keep your your uh plants actually staying in the substrate and I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people on here that have tried to plant plants and, and not had success. Uh, like I said earlier, with the crib, I can kind of wrap the roots in, around my finger, then use that those curved tweezers to kind of push the roots to where I want them to be and let them go. And they st actually stay in the substrate versus um, floating up. And, you know, I'm sure everybody's had it where, you know, the flow is wrong and you have plants floating on when you come home from work or something. So I actually have a little trick on getting the plants to stick in with the the normal tweezers. So yeah. what I do is is when I get them, uh, the roots in between, and I get everything stuck in the substrate, I kind of let yeah. go. And before I pull up, I like vibrate the tweezers and shake them. Yeah. So as it comes up, everything kind of gets left behind. And it's kind of like the, the smaller vibrations that you can make and the faster movements. Yeah. Everything is just left behind. It's like you kind of do that if you watch The Flash, how he like shakes yeah. his hand and he's able to like super speed and go through walls and stuff like that. It, you you got to. Yeah, that, that's what I was talking about, like shaking it out. You tap it. You tap it, let the substrate kind of fall, fall around it and, and pull it out. Yeah, I, I the straight tweezers for me, especially because I've got a retarded hand because of like getting in a car accident on the 16th. So like if I have to get on a cer certain angle, it's really hard for me. So those those curved tweezers helps me with making sure it stays down in those hard spots. Um, this is the reason why I'm not allowed to put rocks in the tanks at competitions. <laughs> but we also have a super long. Ah, those are fancy. Pair of tweezers that are curved. And they're hydro dip too, so you don't have to worry about them rusting as much or anything like nice. that. Nice. Shelby just has to worry about getting hit in the face when I'm working with these. The best thing about the curved tweezers, so a lot of people, especially when you're in docs, like so many people don't teach you how to use these things. Um, so I get frustrated yeah. really easily. I don't use tweezers most of the time. I have smaller hands, so I'm lucky to be able to get into the little cracks, but people with bigger hands can't use them. But this teaches you, this curve is there for a reason. It's so that you take the plant and you curve it in. 
like a U shape. Yeah. You're bringing those roots down and you're pulling this up. So it, it helps a lot when you do it that way. If you try to just push it down, it's not just going to go push down. So that's what yeah. that curve is teaching you about is to show you that's how you're supposed to plant it is push it down, curve up so that it stays. Um, Cause when you curve it's, down the, the, the substrate goes up top, but yeah, yeah. it's a, it's really yeah, especially when you have tweezers sometimes. Yeah. If there's no roots on it, it's especially difficult to try to get some plants down. Uh, uh, so yeah, my first big, I, 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 I'm sorry, ahead. Brian, go ahead. No, you froze. I, so I thought, thought you were done. I was like, all right, well, all right, my first like uh, big proud parent moment was when we did the aquascape contest uh, at the aquatic experience or Jaden did the aquascape contest. Sorry. And he's setting everything up. I was allowed to pour the substrate in for him and that's about it. And he gets his wood, he puts his wood and some rocks in and then I hand him all of his plants and I expected him to just grab the plants and just shove it on in there. And I was like, go on, buddy, just go ahead, put the plants in. And he's like, no, dad, I, I want your tweezers. And then he grabbed these and did them just like how I did it and stuck all the plants in and, and he did a really yeah. good job. So that, that was like the first, like, he, he obviously is around it enough. He watches us do it and, you know, he copied what me and Shelby do. Yeah, we should do it. We should do a kids episode where I mean, we don't have to have our kids on it, but I got a couple of escapes that my my kids helped me with that we can brag about. You know? No, no, no. Your kids versus my kids. Winner takes all. <laughs> as long as it's not a fight. <laughs> welcome in, Fishymon and Lucas. Welcome, big shrimp and ass. Why do you never see yellow really scrimps? So. We have yellow King Kong really shrimps, um, but the yellow variety of Neocaridina reallys just have not hit the market. We've seen like two or three of them pop up in our colony. However, by the time they like fully mature and hit like their maximum size, a lot of the times the color fills in. And sometimes this will happen with like reallys and other shrimp, uh, uh, the, the reds and the oranges as well. But um I just don't see many people making the line for them. It's just taking more time. Same with the blacks. There isn't like a lot of like solid black Ridley's out there. Nano said, I thought Grant was going for the hammer and bucket. Oh, uh, no. So, the, oh, let me grab our hammers. Actually, Shelby, go ahead and you give your next one. What's your next favorite? Um, we did the tweezers. We did... What about scissors? Like, what's your favorite type of scissors? The curved ones, for sure, that he already yeah. showed. So they're really nice. They're a lot easier to get into those spots that you need. So the curved tweezers definitely do better. Um, if you can get smaller ones, they do make smaller ones in, like, the um, nail kits that you can buy. Um, really cheap at Walmart. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they make curved ones too. Oh, is that it? Those are curved, right? No, they're not curved, but I can easily put oh. it in a vice and curve them. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Those, I'm glad you brought that up because that's always been my secret, especially in smaller tanks, is using those types of scissors, especially if you want a carpet. Oh, yeah. And um, then... But yeah, definitely curved curved scissors is definitely my my favorite. Yep, Crib said I never liked the straight tweezers. Always got better hold when using the curve. Yes, helps so much so better with the one curve. One thing I would say, scissors is investing in a better quality pair. Uh, if you want to have good aquascaping, it helps with. Not only does it help with like your ability to cut what you want to cut, but it also has a healthier cut so things can grow back in because it's been severed completely versus right. kind of sheared uh and you, you'll notice if you're not having a good cut is if it after you cut it off that top little section starts to really melt away quickly just like when cutting hair you don't want to just grab a yeah. household scissors you want some good quality scissors or else you're gonna butcher it so it's the same concept with that is yes you definitely want a good pair of scissors 
I couldn't find the hammers. I understand, like, they're, they're just hammers. What's the point? But uh, so on one of the hammers, it's just a regular hammer where it has the two prongs on the back that you can ply out the uh, nails with when you're hammering along and, you know, you mess one up. Uh, the other hammer, however, has a chisel on the back. So yes. you can use it as a chisel, and then the back end is the hammer, and you can literally hammer to hammer and chisel out the rocks, and it's really nice to carve them out. Um, we Especially definitely need to find that. Yeah, so like going on a fault line or something like that to crack rocks, it's really yeah. easy to like craft them. If you've seen the dragon stone scape that I have where all the pointy spears make up the whole like Lord of the Rings-themed uh, mountain scenery, um that that chisel definitely was you know used on on making those however i will be ordering before we even go to pennsylvania a rock crusher because that's going to save yeah. us a lot of time it really yeah. is yeah and nobody's going to be allowed to borrow it because all of our precious little dust and minerals there's going to be on the bottom and i don't got time to swap it in and out yeah they can take the hammers. Jamie said, my most used tool is a turkey baster. I don't think I've ever used a turkey baster. Oh, instead of used one. shot glasses. <laughs> that's what we do oh. for tight little spaces of or, shot or glasses. Or funnels. We've used funnels too. So, so here's a turkey baster secret. If you have super porous stones like lava rock, if you make, if you make sure you clear out those holes, you get less of a nutrient spike because there's less rot just getting caught in those like dead zones, basically. The other thing is, is if you're ever doing a carpet like even Monte Carlo or Dwarf Baby, Baby Tears and stuff like that, and it gets nasty underneath it, if you spray your carpet like right before a water change and then pull that water out, sometimes people even rubber band it to a hose and they'll spray the stuff, they'll spray their, their carpeting plants. So it it's kind of sprays up into the hose as you're doing a water change. The that's a that's a really good one to bring up because I didn't even think about mentioning it, but it's one that I, I use all the time. And then uh, the next one I was going to bring up is a little scraper. This one here is an acrylic safe one, so you're not going to scratch the uh, the surface of any uh, tanks that you might have. And then I also like to use it to like smooth out substrate and to work the, you know, the depth and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, but a lot of times people don't think about this is when you fill up that tank originally, you're going to get a lot of tiny micro bubbles on the front of the tank. So it's always good to yeah. go nice and slow with one of these razors from the bottom up to get rid of all those little micro bubbles to make it view the viewing a lot more pleasurable. Cinchy Booch says that that plant we sent, thing, thinking it's a Wendy Oh, it's a crip. I'm not sure what kind of crip it is, Thank honestly. Not the one you thought was uh, the. I think it's a Luce, uh, Lucia or Lucens. If it's long with thin ends to it, it could be a Lucens. I um, just haven't had time to identify it yet. I've got other ones, so when I identify it, I'll let you know. Spaz says, I'm sure there are other videos, but I learned a lot from Green Aqua YouTube channel about aquascaping tools. Welcome in, Garcia Aquatics. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. I forgot all about calling you. Welcome in, Richard. I forget horrible. about everything. I, Any I advice know. you can give on growing subwasser tang? So it doesn't like a lot of light. Uh, it's one of the few yes. plants that we put in the tanks where... Uh, the seven foot or the six foot lights don't go all the way across the eight foot uh, two by fours that we have. So there's like one tank at the end of the row that doesn't get a lot of light. And the Sawasser tank seems to just thrive in there. That and water changes. It just absolutely loves your water changes. Yeah. Keeper says my new favorite tool is the an algae scraper that uses a razor blade cuts it off the glass like a hot knife through butter never had such clean glass until i got this yes i switched back and forth there is um instead of this one i don't remember who makes these but there's a metal one that you could get too and i only yeah. use it when i have like real hard algae buildup 
Um, make sure you always have water in the tank if you're using a metal one and a razor blade one. And yes, yes. Jamie made a point. Watch the silicone. Um, the best part about that is um, so the silicone algae just comes right off. So uh, the best thing to do, don't ever use a scraper at all. Take your finger and just smudge it right down. It will take it all off. It doesn't really stick to silicone at all. So then you won't be damaging your silicone seals. Or very, so very, the magic very eraser pads, the magic eraser pads work perfect. They, you can get them like in thin sheets that you can kind of rip off and you can use them for a long time. But if you want to do the razor on the glass and then do the corners with the magic eraser, it gets, it gets algae off like, like that. And it's Which funny magic eraser are you that. using though? Because usually those have a lot of chemicals in them. No, there's um, it, it's it's there's the, the microfiber. I can't remember the exact type, but I I have some inside. Um, I've used okay. it because I do clothes. have those at work still, and then they are just straight magic racer brand. Um, and they yeah. do have chemicals. It's a slight chemical in them, but they do have chemicals. So I'd be careful which ones you get. <laughs> But they do have just enough to where when you wet it, that's yeah. the whole reason like you're just supposed to wet it and you could use other abrasion technology to take off the cleaning. Um, but it does have a slight little bit. It probably doesn't hurt much fish, but I would be very careful with shrimp. Yeah, like see, so ones. you could yeah, so I, I usually will will rent will rinse it out really well before I use it. And I'm mostly using it for the microfiber. And I usually use it the magic eraser is on an empty tank that I need to get cleaned off. So if you ever had dried algae on a tank and tried to rewater it and get it off, the magic eraser works great for that where you wouldn't be, you're be draining it and not worry about chemicals on it. But yeah, that's a good point to bring up just in case you get the wrong kind. Have a good night, Caprice. Shelby, you try the small springed aquascape scissors. No, I have not. I don't invest in um We have tools. them, though. <laughs> Chance gave them to us. We oh, just never used really? them. I don't know where uh, they went. After we got them, they're like... Oh, yeah, I got in some one of, of those. The I think they're in the dry good bin. Or they There's were, a lot. Those are, my, those are actually my favorite from a control standpoint. Oh, huh. I think I might have a hair over here. I'll have to try them. I'm one of those people. I just find whatever's readily available next to me. And that's why the paintbrush became my favorite thing because I usually tend to always have paintbrushes on me. We've just always made do with these, the snips. We got the JBJ stainless steel ones. So we've been using those Jamie since says, the first aquatic experience. Yeah. Jamie says you need a rock hammer. Cross prospecting hammer is i believe the name of it welcome in agua manita said i like the half scaped game better yeah it's just that was with chance so we're not doing that anymore yeah we'll come up with a a new name we just haven't decided on one yet also don't know if this is going to be like the the whole rhythm that we're going to be doing with things shelby would like to bring on some guests um and then i'd also like to bring on eddie kind of mix things up with the the wednesday night slot also like right now i think we're going over stephen p's channel and they do this thing where they draw and then you have to guess what kind of fish it is and I suck at fish, and I think that would be a great little game to play every Wednesday night to try and, you know, increase my knowledge of fish and stuff like that. So I don't know if Wednesday nights is going to be our permanent home or if this is what we're going to be doing. Monday nights works really well for us, but um, this was kind of the night Chance chose that was best for him. So we're going to figure out when Shelby steps down what days off she'll have maybe we'll change Speaking it. Of, I need to talk to you guys about that after the stream. Okay. Said, Brian, I use a syringe with a 10-inch needle to blast away detris, mulm, and diatoms when it starts accumulating. That's a good way to prevent algae from starting up. Jamie says, I use a comb. Oh, was Brian still talking? Did you freeze? 
I think Brian might be for Yep, he's oh, back. There you go. Jamie said, I use a comb to remove duckweed from my tank. I use a baster to suck up the shrimp shrimplets from the bucket. Not a bad idea. Um, That's a good idea. Yeah, I just net out the uh, that duckweed. You know what's funny? For years and years, we had not had duckweed in the house. And it took us forever to net out all the duckweed, get it gone, Um Took a lot of patience. I have a lot of patience. That's for sure. You know who I'm with. You know, <laughs> but yeah. they, uh, it, you know, get it all out, and sure enough, uh, we ordered some more and got duckweed everywhere, and it's killing me because it's in the fish tanks, and now I have to do this little motion just to get it in. Do it on purpose. But yeah, so so going back to the half scape thing. Sorry, I was looking for my spring scissors, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're shooting towards re, kind of re re relaunching that kind of concept with the contest, I guess. So uh, it won't be a weekly. Th our Grant and Shelby are still gonna have a weekly thing. I'll be in the rotation uh, when they don't have better things to do, I guess. <laughs> I'm just we gotta make it through that. the travels. All right, we we are ready for five weeks of constant. Fish show, fish expo, yeah. fish auction yeah. weekends here. And not only that, but this week, last weekend was the Pasco Club. Next weekend is the Tampa Bay Club. Like, technically, we had like seven this weeks weekend is Tampa in Bay a row. Club. Yeah. This Saturday. But yeah. So we're doing the seven weekends in a row of fish clubs yeah. and shows. Gonna be oh, they're talking about cleaning glass. I use rocks, stones to clean my glass. It works perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. It's pretty good. It seems efficient. <laughs> Five said, fall spirit, anyone? I'm drinking eggnog and eating cinnamon apple pie. You are right in there with the basic girls at, uh, in line for their pumpkin spice <laughs> latte. <Yeah. spread. laughs> I, I got my pumpkin yeah. muffin the other day. Yeah, so I'm right there. And when we, we went, did have some, pump, I did have some pumpkin donuts the other day. Uh, huh? Pumpkin donuts came around the other day. My daughter got some, so I guess it's that time. Yeah. yeah. In I Florida, you have to kind of. Well, Florida, it's a whole different thing. Like you, just, it's your mentality changes to that season. It's not the weather. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. It's not like everyone else is like sweater weather. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hot and I'm going, wait, wait, Halloween's coming up, it's gonna be too hot. I just want it to be Halloween. Uh -oh. Um all right, all right, we're back. There's a button on our mouse that takes us completely out of the it's, stream. It's a backwards button. It's literally, I've never seen that before. Are they coming back? Anyways. Oh, he's frozen. There, there's a, uh, we have a bunch of shirts that are Halloween themed, that are fish yeah. themed, and I just can't wear them until it's October. And we're going to lose Brian now. He's <laughs> lagging bad. It's probably because we logged back in. Brian. Oh no. Well, jump back in the chat. Brian Brian Crip said I'm hiding sub -wasa. I know. I know. Wasa. I'm hiding sub -wasa tang under a bunch of wind love. Growing like crazy for me and kind of looks really good with the two textures blended. Yep. Sub -wasa tang like like Grant was saying does not like much light, so it will grow a lot better especially with other plants. It is I am big on the screen now. Welcome in, Miss Kitty. I am with the turkey baster guy. I went out and bought one the other day. Well, welcome back, turkey baster guy. <laughs> hey, I'm a turkey baster guy. It must have been us cutting out that came back in that made you cut out. Uh, I, was, I was wondering what was going on because I was like, am I just smiling at a screen my internet's out? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I think Brian yeah. was hosting it after we left. Yeah. So we had to we had to uh, take the host back. I did I, I did the Wayne's World thing where I was like, yeah, Grant must have sprayed Shelby with the bottle again and she had enough. 
<laughs> she would have deserved it trying try me with that whole patience thing. Oh, don't I'll worry, I'm sure Shelby's there. Shelby's already scheming how she's gonna get back. <laughs> she's in it for uh, the long so con. Notice I've got no mustache. Today was <laughs> like the last day. If I didn't get rid of it, I was gonna get the eviction notice. Aqua Bonita said, I found tiny dark green four inch zip ties at the dollar store. They are the bomb for Nubius and Boost. Yeah. So I think I have baby auto cat. Uh, yeah. You? Yeah. Oh, are you going to claim them as yours? Did you buy the auto cat? Feed them? Yes, oh, I yeah. feed them. It's so funny. He buys them and then doesn't feed them and I thinks do they're feed his. Them. So, I yeah, see, I'm was... surprised you can use the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers because those have chemicals in it. Oh, it is a microplastic. The fancier ones are better. Okay, maybe you do have the... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what it there's is. There's got to be different ones because I know there's some that definitely have... One's chemicals. just a microfiber or a microplastic surface that you can reuse. The other one has actual chemicals in it like uh, yeah. for getting up like stains and, and serious stuff. Okay. Okay. So there must be a difference. I've never seen the ones without chemicals. Our stores like to kill us with those chemicals. So Snoop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brandon says you could upgrade your turkey baster by rubber banding a three eighths inch tube and an inch from the baster and control the siphon while being yeah, which is what Brian was talking about. <laughs> Um, I think it's a turkey baster guy. Yeah, yep. And another tool that I was going to bring up and, and talk about is the heat plate. So that way you can heat up a pot of water to make your thermoplastics. Um, we have a little like uh, skirt issue on the bottom of our truck. And I was like, you know what, Shelby, I want to fix it with thermoplastic. And she's like, that's not going to work because when it gets to 100 degrees, it'll get soft that it's Florida and it's 100 degrees. So it's like, all right, yeah, I guess I got to wait till the winter for that one to work. So well, since you brought up that wonderful tool we use, thermoplastics, obviously, um, one thing that I learned from George to think about it though. Um, I do like to use it, but I would like to not use it as much as possible. Try to make things as natural um, and not use so much. Like it's different when you think about it from other cultures. So like George made a point of saying like, they don't like to use much electricity and we're sitting there using that to heat it up. So when you think about it, it's, it's so different when we're in the United States and we don't care, you know, like we don't think about so it, but and big rock structures, yes, it would be, I'll always use thermoplastics, but if you're doing a natural, like try to achieve it without having to use that. So, so and, but, but and what if we just point. use like a little cauldron and, and, and heat it up a little fire underneath? Okay, fine. Is that fine? Yeah. Well, I'm going to yeah. put, I'm actually going to try the outside yeah. things if I can get the water hot enough. We should try do. I told him what I want to do is bring 10 gallon tanks to like, uh, the collecting spots we do play, plant them down yeah. like do it like all ferociously and like grab mud and throw it in there and then like make a cool aquascape and throw all the water and tannins in there i think it would be fun and interesting oh i finally see it thank you so much garcia aquatics for the five dollars oh, saying you guys i think really that deserves the new one not worthy for not contacting you he wants some shellies for the aqua expo in south florida so we are gonna have to make sure that we bring him six of the shows. Where is it? Oh, here it is. I must have labeled this one wrong. No, 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 no. That was the right one, though. Okay. You're good. All right. But thank you, man. Much appreciated. <laughs> Vibes, sweater weather. Yeah, this morning I saw TikTok and it was just people literally just going sweater weather. Shelby doesn't <laughs> even own sweaters. She just steals mine. Yeah, I literally, so when we go out anywhere and there's sweaters like to be bought, because I get really cold. I actually wore a sweater today inside because when it rains outside, 
Uh, there, the AC is cold everywhere in Florida because it's so hot out. So when it rains and it gets nice and cool, you go in soaking wet to like 60 degree AC everywhere and then you're freezing. Um, but yeah, I tell him when he goes to buy a sweater, I'm like, can you buy a sweater? But remember, the sweater is for you, but for me. And that just means like he needs to buy it for himself so that I wear it because it's just more comfortable that way, you know? But us girls just like to steal men's jackets. So it's just better. Women will understand it. <laughs> also, food tastes better when you order it and then she eats it. That's true. <laughs> so that says, I don't do that. You do that. He literally does that. He's the one who does that. Like, uh, he'll be like, no, nah, I don't want any. And then two minutes later, he's stealing my french fries. It goes both ways. To, no. It wasn't a sexist. Thing. No. He, you definitely do that. Spad says, two more weeks until I start drinking pumpkin beer. I always wait until it's actually October. I just told him that I didn't even think about it. I decorated my store. I got all this bright neon green, like, cobweb everywhere and these cool, like, bats. So I was like, uh, I don't know if anyone's seen the TikTok of, it's it's a little kid going it's freaking bats and then just like it's so cute and i that's all i thought about so i got all this bat stuff I and I'm like super, i was super excited and then i looked at grin and i was like i just realized it's not even october yet <laughs> i just decorated for halloween at the store no one's commented though so we're we're going places See, i'm all i'm all about not having uh not having any rules or the least amount of rules in life. So if you like pumpkin stuff, whenever you want pumpkin stuff, do it. If it makes you happy to wait till October and you appreciate it more, then do it. <laughs> right. I'll get to a point where I start eating a pumpkin pie every week. And then I get so sick of it that I don't want it until next year. So Aqua Bonita said, the reason I like half scaped is that is exactly what all my tanks are. <laughs> They're working to grow oh, fish, yeah. shrimp, and plants, but I still want them to be presentable. Yep, we have plenty of we have plenty of tanks that are half scaped. That's for sure. <laughs> I definitely want more. Of course, he was double viewing streams. You're not doing the <laughs> same, Crypt Keeper. You got to support everybody in the family. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta have three monitors up at all times just in case there's another person. <laughs> and then uh we forget any tools. Probably. There's so many, it's not even funny. Yeah. Uh yeah, I think so you covered the scrapers. I don't really like the long scrapers, like the ones for substrate. You know, the ones that have the double end, like the skinny. I, I don't really yeah. use it. If it's that if it's that small, I just use my finger. <laughs> right oh you're talking about the ones that have the two different size scrapers on each side yeah yeah, they yeah i've never like used it pack. that's always like the third one yeah. between scissors and tweezers yeah yeah i've never i tried using one and like it made an awful sound on my tank and i was like nope done done yeah that's a scrape that's a scratch um i did see earlier someone said that they used wool i missed i skipped right over that that they use steel wool. Oh, here it is. For cleaning glass, I use stainless steel scrub pad. It's the best way to go when they get old. They start losing the odd bits of metal. Tells you to time replace them. Um, so I would assume that actually is causing micro scratches on your glass. So I yeah. wouldn't um, use I'd that be too often. Super worried about it. Yeah. There is a very fine bronze wool that would help. That is very. It's very soft compared to it, um, but I wouldn't. That's at, at the same time though. The razor blades don't really scratch up the glass, so I don't know. If it, if it's hard, like hard water stains, maybe I would use you, that. You assume people are using it. that to like wash their glasses mm -hmm. at like restaurants and stuff, and they're they're still not like scratched up. A lot of those are. It depends on the type of glass, though. So. Yeah. When it's that's the thing, you're not going to be able to see it though. So, uh, obviously, if oh, you drain strange, a tank yeah. and it has micro scratches, you're going to see it um, when the tank is empty and dry. The if it's wet at all, you're not going to see those uh, little micro scratches. So, like, we have a lot of our 55 gallons, they are screwed up. You would never be able to tell until it was dry and sitting still, and you're like, oh, goodness gracious. Or you go to take a, like a really good micro picture, like, um, 
um, using a oh, macro so. lens, um, it would you could see every little tiny scratch that's on that tank. Um, so we've learned the hard way. I used to use like the green scrubby on the sponges because those work really well. They're like take these out, scrub algae, it, rinse it. And but, algae always starts in the, in the in the scratches. So like if you ever want that spontaneous picture, that spontaneous catcher, that's when that shows up. You know, mm -hmm. with um, for for the most part, like like I don't. That's why I escape inside this tank versus like trying to do it outside and put it together because uh, when you fill it up, you don't see the scratches. So, um, plus I've had this tank for a long time, so I've I know where the scratches are, and the front glass is actually pretty good. I've been waiting for like one of those like safe light repair like glass kits that you can fix like a, a crack on a windshield to come out That'd for like nice. aquarium that you can like fix a. You know there what I mean? Is. There is? There is. Um, it's not as specific. I'll find that link for us and we'll talk about it next time. But it's like a liquid glass to fix aquariums. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Maybe the boat front yeah. isn't done for yet. Uh, I still, I don't know. I don't trust on like repairing things. But um, Subwasserton grows also mixed in under the leaves of Anubis. The main thing I find with Subwasserton is mostly just not to move them at all. Mm -hmm. Yep. And thank you again, Garcia. Love balls. the support. Mm -hmm. No Dr. Anthony tonight? 34. He wasn't on Monday, I don't think, either. Must be very busy. 34 there tonight no thank you i don't even have hands it's no me and grant were just seriously talking about that the other day like we were i don't remember what brought it up but like we were both like we both don't have jeans like neither one of us have a pair of jeans so traveling coming up and very cold jeans. i don't think they're gonna fit you but he fluctuates in weight so many times he doesn't realize when things are I not going to fit at all. Pounds by tomorrow in a weight cut. I was going to say, just give him a week. I don't think that's the problem. I think there. they're too small for them. I, think I they're could too also big. add on 40 pounds of cannoli weight. Two days, no problem. Big dog thing. asked again, is UV light bad for fish t tank or shrimp? No, it's all right. I still want to use it. So, I don't think we're going to make this one a long one tonight. I think Shelby's about uh, near nope, caught up here. in chat. Yep. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, we are leaving for Pennsylvania next week for the Keystone Clash. And then the following week, we are going to AGA. And then the week after that, we're going to Chicago Aqua Shell we are taking pre-orders for all three of them. So if there's something that you want at any of the shows, Crypt Keeper has already pre-ordered 10 aquatic isopods. They are one of those things that is a little bit more tedious for me to get my hands on and catch. So we kind of like avoid it if we don't have the time to bring something like that. So if you want a certain type of caradina or something like that, Message us because we're just bringing the basic necessities, every kind of or color of neos besides snowballs, and then we're bringing tangerine tigers. Shelby will probably do some raccoons. You thinking? Maybe a bag. So nothing too fancy or anything like that, but we can bring it if it's something you want. Uh, we do plan on bringing like a nice smorgasbord of plants. So. Uh, plenty of mosaics and other things like that. I'll be placing an order through the nursery on uh, Friday to replace all of the stuff that uh, we've sold out in the last couple of weeks. It's bad so to eat some pumpkin cheese cake so you fit in those jeans. Oh, I could do that. <laughs> I could eat three of those for breakfast tomorrow, no problem. <laughs> I've got an issue when it comes to sweets. Chocolates, not so much, but... Definitely like custard, ice cream, cheesecake. I'm all about it. I'm with green you. Jades. So green jades, you're going to have to let me know how many you want me to bring, Snoop, because and, and which show. I uh, probably won't be bringing any green jades. We sold some to one of our uh, good customers today, but I don't offer them on the website. It's 
I, I'm always worried that people are going to get our shrimp and be unsatisfied with the quality. They lose so much color during shipping that like, I really want to explain to them like, Hey, you got to put these on black substrate. You got to have the right parameters in order for them to show the right colors. So, yeah. Jamie said, make yourself a Southern style belt, but use airline instead of rope. Oh, so yeah, we yeah, use yeah. weed whacker string down here in the south. Right, but you need to use airline for your shrimp. Uh, emergency, I, emergency drip acclimation in sin. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Uh, he doesn't awesome. see the, po the possibilities of that. Jamie, you're a genius. Oh, I, I see the possibilities. I just, I, I just didn't see the usefulness of having it on me at all times. He's just not. It's public, so he can't patent it. <laughs> oh man! I think we're gonna end on that note. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us. Check out the website. We've got the fish. We've got a bunch of the shrimp on sale still that we're trying to move out of Jaden's room. But till then. We'll see you next week. I think we'll still be here before we leave for Pennsylvania on Wednesday. Um, but it will be an extremely short stream next week because we have to get up extra early and leave uh, for Pennsylvania. So what's that? 15 for the Green Jades. 15 All right. if possible. But what show? I, I can't bring them to each one of the places we're going. So um, email me, graineater at gmail.com, and I'll make sure I get that for you guys. So. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thank Brian. You, Thank you, Replay Crew. Thank you, Mods. Later, everybody.